Hey guys, it's Townie Simbuilds here, and we are going strong this Halloween season. We're back with another spooky build, and today's build is actually a dual request from two fellow Simmers. Plan with Ivy originally requested some sort of haunted mansion or pumpkin patch, and Kevin Hemphill requested a haunted farmhouse set in the land of Henford on Bagley. So I thought, hey, you know, these are really great ideas. Let me actually merge them into one and design this huge haunted colonial farm. I had a lot of fun doing this, and this was actually the first time I've used the content from the paranormal stuff pack that I got for the first time. So without further ado, let's head on to the land of Henford on Bagley and check out the lot. All right, guys, and here we are with a full view of the haunted colonial farm. As promised, we are in fact in the world of Henford on Bagley. And to be honest with you guys, I had a blast making this. It really felt like a throwback for me because this type of farm, this type of house known as the colonial style is very common where I grew up. I actually grew up in an area known as New England, which is pretty far northeast here in the United States. But I did give this house a slightly gothic edge, I guess, uh, just to fit with the theme a little better. Towards the front, we have some pretty interesting details. Here's just a look at the front gate with the wishing well kind of nestled below the big red tree. And towards the back, I did include two hidden gravestones. Now, because the estate is haunted, I did want to give it some lore. And I was really inspired by the ghost couple that came with the Windenburg world. I believe they're called Lady Mimsy and Lord Bernard. So they could have been former occupants. This area is, of course, the little makeshift river with the bridges going across, and it's it's pretty swampy. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's pretty, it's pretty overgrown, but I think it's really cool. It does have a bunch of firefly spawners there as well. And then playing with Ivy here is, in fact, the pumpkin patch featuring Patchy himself. Now, I did include the season's pumpkins over the cottage living ones because I thought they could actually survive. They don't spoil. Uh, but you're more than welcome to put your own crops there. And up here, of course, is the chicken coop area. So a nice little enclosure for some animals. I originally put, um, I believe, a cow shed here, but I thought the chickens could make better use of the space. Moving out, we'll take a look at the lot in different forms of lighting. We're currently in the morning view. This is the view in the afternoon. This is the evening view. Currently in the night view now, where it's a lot more spooky. And then back to the morning view, where we will take a look inside. So starting off with the first floor, we do have a whole bunch of rooms to explore. But starting off, we will begin with the main entrance that leads into the mudroom. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a mudroom is, it's pretty much an area where you take off your shoes, take off your coat, maybe put away an umbrella. It's a nice place to clean up before you enter the main part of the house itself. So afterwards, moving in, we are in fact in the main hallway area with the staircase going up. And this house is pretty big. It is pretty much split into two parts, so I'll head to the right side first. And we do get a look at the small library to the right side. So this library is mostly furnished with a lot of the content from the Paranormal Stuff Pack, which I thought was really cool. And it was quite a challenge using this pack because a lot of the objects are quite colorful and they don't really quite fit the colonial theme, but I thought this kind of faded turquoise and kind of chocolatey brown color scheme went pretty well together. Over here is just a look at the partial bathroom downstairs, so it's perfect for maybe some dinner guests who need to use the restroom. And then heading back through the double doors is a sweet little living room. It's kind of tucked away. It does have a view of the outside, including a view of the gravestones, um, ironically. Um, but it is, in fact, pretty cozy. We do use a lot of the nice curtains from Paranormal Stuff. And again, a lot of those cool, nice indoor plants as well. Moving back, we will explore the left side of the estate now. And I don't really know what this room would be called, technically. But I did make it a sort of sitting slash waiting room, if you will, um, for guests that are possibly waiting for dinner to be ready to be served in the main dining room itself. So... We do have the portrait of Lord Bernard. He is one of the deceased occupants or former occupants of this estate. And we'll actually see his wife very shortly going on into the dining room. And there she is, in fact. She is Lady Mimsy, put on proud display there. And this, this um, I was going to call it a living room. Uh, this dining room is probably one of my favorite features of this house. 
I went back and forth a lot with it, but I really love the whole color scheme. I love kind of the way the seating area was and getting that uh, cottage living fireplace situated quite right. And it does remind me of a lot of colonial style museums I used to visit as a kid. A lot of times they would kind of pretty much like recreate the colonial scene within the room itself to give it a more like historic experience. But my babbling aside, we are in fact in the kitchen area now, and this kitchen uses a lot of content from Cottage Living. So it definitely creates more of an old time rustic feel that I was going for. And there is a large wooden table here as well, um, serving as more of the breakfast nook table. Usually these kind of like rustic wood tables were more common in colonial times because uh, there was just a lot of handcrafted furniture. So I thought it fit pretty nicely. Of course, I used the little space under the stairs as a sort of trash room. And then going back, we have the second mud room. This second mud room actually connects to the outside, so I figured that if you have Sims that are farming, they can enter through the back and then pretty easily wash themselves off and clean up. So we do have a nice bench there to take off shoes, clean your boots. And I did include a very small shower area just to kind of clean yourself off. And hopefully it makes farming a little more efficient. Moving up to the second floor, we do enter a pretty large landing area. And towards the back, I created a sort of sitting nook for your sims. It's a nice place to kind of read or hang out. And it uses a lot of content from the paranormal stuff pack. Moving forward, we of course have a view of the staircase heading back towards the main entrance. And along the walls, I just added a little bit more decor. I think there was a end table from Cottage Living and then some china from the base game there as well. Moving forward is a view of the master bedroom. It pretty much continues the color schemes seen in the living room and other rooms seen downstairs. And I made sure to make it pretty cozy. It uses a lot of content from both the paranormal stuff pack and the cottage living pack. It's also filled with a lot of lamps and candles because I figured, you know, if this house is filled with paranormal activity, we do not want to be in the dark. Heading on in, we do have a view of the ensuite master bathroom, and it does have the same counters seen in the kitchen area just to keep the style pretty consistent throughout. And I do think it's pretty cozy. I used a lot more decor. I think there was, again, the plant from Paranormal Stuff, the kind of little cabinet from the Seasons pack, and we do have his and his ropes there as well. Heading on towards the back, we do have a second bedroom, and this bedroom was actually designed for the psychic or clairvoyant sim living in the house that's trying to assist the couple with their spiritual needs. Her room is a lot more green and brown, it's a lot more feminine I think, but it has some really cool decor from the paranormal stuff pack, and she has her research desk and computer there as well. Her bathroom is pretty simple. It is a lot like the um, kind of guest bathroom downstairs. So it does have all the essentials there for her. Moving over, we enter a pretty mysterious room. And this room, I originally did not know what to do with it, but I pretty much turned it into a paranormal collectible room, very similar to that of Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are pretty renowned supernatural and paranormal investigators. So there's a lot of haunted stuff. There is a creepy doll there, the cow plant, a sort of native totem, and a lot of the supernatural paintings on the wall as well from the paranormal stuff pack. Moving on over, we do enter a sort of artist studio, and I thought the concept was pretty cool. It kind of felt like an abandoned bedroom. Maybe there was a former occupant here who could not handle the paranormal activity and was forced to leave. So now this room has pretty much been converted into an artistic space for the main couple or the clairvoyant sim living here. Moving over and closing out the primary rooms is the study area. So this is a it's, it's similar to the library, if you will, but it is more of an area to work on the computer, maybe sit and read a book in a more private setting. And again, it's really furnished with a lot of the cool stuff from the paranormal stuff pack, a lot of the plants. There is a cool little tea set there. And of course, we have Mr. Gidry himself there on the wall, just chilling out next to an open book and a jar of mints, I think. <laughs> I don't really know what candy's in there, but um, it's there while reading a good book. And finally, we have the hallway closet and the stairwell leading to the mysterious attic space. Finishing off our tour, like I mentioned, is the mysterious attic. 
And Kevin, if you're watching this, this is definitely where the haunted aspect really comes into play. As you guys can see, we do have the main seance table that comes with the paranormal stuff pack. And it is surrounded by candles and a sigil made out of salt. So it should be pretty protective against dangerous spirits, hopefully. And as another creepy detail, I did want to include these portraits along the wall. So they could be former occupants or family members that the seance participants may be trying to reach on the other side. Zooming back in, we'll have one final look at the seance table, and this is the view from the ladder leading up towards the attic. So looking at the lot specs as a whole, this is a 50 by 40 lot, so it's definitely on the larger side, but there should be a lot of spaces in the world of Hemford on Bagley, and also in other worlds, including the base game worlds of Willow Creek and Oasis Springs, where this lot could potentially fit. Now the lot type is definitely a special one here, given that you have the paranormal stuff pack, this is a haunted residential lot. So if you move your sims in, you'll definitely encounter a lot of specters and other mischievous spirits that could make your time quite uneasy there, if I do say so myself. Looking at the packs, we use a total of four packs, so it's a little bit more intensive, but we again stick with the four pack limit. We obviously use content from base game, but we also have a lot of content from the Get Together pack, the Seasons pack, Cottage Living, and of course the featured pack of the Paranormal Stuff. Alright guys, and that is a wrap on the Haunted Colonial Farm of Henford on Bagley. Now, Plant with Ivy and Kevin Hemphill, if you guys are watching, I hope you enjoyed this kind of weird combined request. I know it was a little unorthodox, but I hope this lot offers some really cool spooky gameplay for your Halloween season. Now, if you guys enjoy more of these rustic builds, or if you enjoy builds that have a little bit more of a magical, supernatural edge, definitely let me know in the comments. As you guys know, I love hearing all of your thoughts and feedback on these lots, and I definitely have some tricks left for the Halloween season, so definitely stay tuned, we do have some spooky builds left in store. And with that, this has been Townie Sim Builds, signing off. Thank you so much for watching, guys.